I don't know what better way to convey the importance, the true importance of coolant in your manufacturing facility than to step into a world with Olivia where I truly don't know anything. I mean, how embarrassing is it to step on camera for the whole world to see in a realm where I get lost? I got kicked out of my chemistry class, I set my ceiling on fire, and yet I'm here today to talk about the science behind coolant, and nobody better to do that than my friend Olivia. But she's gonna guide this, truly, because I want you to know, and she's the key to most of your problems, Olivia. I gotta be honest, just like I did on camera just now for everyone so they knew what they were getting into with me. This is so significant and you've dedicated your life to making manufacturing better through the realm of coolant and showcasing me the importance of that. But I gotta be honest, I'm trying to build a bridge between your information and connecting with all the audience out there. How can we best do that? Um, well, thank you for being here because it's really important for us to have people who can build this bridge between what I do here in the lab and the chemistry we do here in the lab and your world out there. So it's really important to have people who can translate what I'm talking about to what you are seeing out in the field. So that's a great start. Thank so you. I think together we'll get there. <laughs> I like that. So this used to be your area. It was, yes. Like um, when I started the plaza um, quite some years ago, this was my lab space. It was more of a mess than it is now, <laughs> I have to admit. Um, but yes, my work started here. Um, so developing the, the product for plaza and in the end for our customers um, started here, yeah. So the majority of our audience, and including myself, work in machine shops. Some of us care more, some of us care less about coolant, some of us care more about tooling or work holding or the machines. We all have our, our hierarchy of where we place our, our focus, right? Sure. Here in the lab, here at Blaser, here in Switzerland, you do something that not a whole lot of people can do. And I've seen the breakdown of making sure that your clients are taken care of by working with your R&D, by receiving information and requests from some of the folks out there to make sure that their shops are running well. Can you just discuss the priority that you place on making sure that your coolants are perfected and continually getting better? Yeah, I mean, I so fully understand that out there, the people, they love their tools, they love their machines, they love their work pieces, and not so much the coolant. I love the coolant, so <laughs> I love chemistry, I love what is behind there. So that's my job, you know, to find out what does the customer need out there, what does he need, so that his coolant, you know, can stay in the tank as long as possible, that it can perform at the highest performance. That's my job, to, to bring that, or to translate what the customer wants back into the lab. And of course, it's, it's, it's what every chemist wants, is to find the perfect coolant for, for our customers out there. Um, that's the, the aim, I think, the goal of all of us chemists who work here at Blaser, and to really satisfy what the customer wants, to bring him the performance, to bring him the stability, um, what is important to him. But the more the customers really also care about the coolant and not only the workpiece and the, and, and the tools, the, the better this interaction will work and the longer, I mean, it's, it's money on the table. The longer you can use the coolant, uh, the more money you save. It's actually as easy as that. And taking care of the coolant, you know, just a minimum will help so much and it doesn't take much. I mean, just, just check your concentration, check your pH if, if you take it one step further discuss it with your with your supplier and you already have a huge um, value added to to the coolant to the money you spend on, on the coolant. Olivia I'm going to ask you to describe both yourself and some of your colleagues your daily activities of this behind the scenes chemistry that goes on right and, and I lead you to know that that's the question coming because what I want to describe is a lot of sales folks out there, a lot of the engineers out there, a lot of machinists out there, we always talk about 
Coolant is important. Coolant touches everything. Make sure it's the right mixture. We know by having the right coolant, our tool life is gonna last longer. Our parts are gonna look better. Maybe less secondary operations. Having the right mixture means we don't burn through a barrel as quickly as we might. Instead of it's the, the coolant itself having residue on the material and losing out on money as you've already described. But not every day do we have the opportunity to know everything that we're saying and connect those dots to everything you're doing here in the lab. So would you mind describing a little bit about your daily activities and the people around you to help that, that help us go into our machine shops and make money? Yeah, right. So it's a huge question. I know. <laughs> so I mean, first- We'll, we'll try our best. <laughs> yes, to... let, let's, let's try our best. So first the information comes, comes to Blaser and, and what we do as chemists, either it comes from the outside world in, into Blaser, into the Blaser world, and um, people have their requirements. Our customers want a very specific um, product to work with. That's one way. Or else, um, of course, the chemists—they're all scientists. They love innovation. They love the science behind it. So, of course, we also have um, research um, projects, and out of that, we generate new products, which are innovative, which are really future-oriented. Um, and which will bring us one step further. So that's the first part. And then the chemist starts by thinking what does the customer really need? Because of course we know how to do a general product for, for general use and all those parameters you mentioned before have to be you know, set for all products. So we, have to, we need clean products, we need clean, uh, products that don't rust through a barrel, um, all that is a given. And especially for Blaser, the human friendliness is given. So that is something we have um, been looking at for years and years. We have always um, set the barrier very high so that we don't harm the human behind the machine. That's really important to us. So all that is a given. And then you add the specific stuff that every customer wants. Um, so, and there the, the products start dividing, right? So if, if one wants uh, a special material, he wants top performance and titanium, and he has a special operation, we will have to look into that specifically. We will have to do our research. And we will ha really have to find out what to add into the coolant to get the best performance for our customers out of it. And, um, a, you know, a, a water miscible coolant is, is made of 15 to over 20 different ingredients that have to harmonize in the drum. It has to build an emulsion in, at the customer site. So there are so many factors that have to work and that's all chemistry. So that's really the, the chemistry part of, of a coolant. How many PhD people do we have working here? Oh wow, um, I can't even tell you the correct number because in R&D alone we have like six, seven PhDs. Um, we, have, we also have a material scientist, so he's a PhD too. Um, we ha most of us are chemists, um, but we also have PhDs working in, in customer service, so um, in microbiology, in analytics, in sales support. Um, there's a lot of, of chemical know-how, a lot of microbiological know-how, material science. Um, there's a lot of, of um, highly... Smart people. Uh, I, Smart and people I'm, I'm, out there. I'm lucky to work with them. It's true because, you know, we, we just, we have to put the puzzle together and of, of, for, for each um, new development, it's, it's like a hu huge puzzle we're doing and everybody contributes from their side, from their knowledge. We put it together and, and end up um, with the product we were looking for. Well, I know, but we both put on our party pants for this interview, so I have one more question for you. Uh, and I know how much you love the camera as well. What happens if your department doesn't exist? What happens What if happens my... to the coolant if, th oh. if this chemistry... Oh, wow. Um, so the department's we are talking about our R&D and customer service, right? It so would turn it's, into it's, water it's, pretty it's, much, it's, I think. Yes, it's, it's, it's the whole life cycle of a product. Um, 
Yeah, you, that you, is you your can't importance. machine. You can't machine with pure water, right? That's the answer uh, I wanted to get. So you cannot machine without you. Yeah. You cannot yeah. make things without you. Our cutting. I mean, except for the occasional ceramic end mill cutting an Inconel that doesn't need coolant or the Apparently woodworking. I heard about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. But as a majority rule, we can't machine. Yeah. And with that's that's how important this is. That's how important this department is, and that's how important your coolant is so I, I'm yeah please I'm getting on camera in a world that I don't fully know because I believe in Olivia and I believe in you and I believe in the importance of coolant we just need to build that bridge to make it not the last thing you think about but the first thing when you when you want to make money when you want to improve when you want better finish and longer tool life and all the things that Olivia does for you to make your life easier and yet she's the unsung hero so make coolant more important in your life. This is why we travel the world bringing all of this information to you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.